All right, guys, how's everybody doing? This is Dane at Zim's Guitars here in Mesa, Arizona. And I just have a restring video to do today. And But I wanted to show you guys this bass because this is a really cool bass that I haven't seen before. This is a Music Man bongo four-string bass made right there in beautiful California. We're going to clean the fretboard. We're going to put some strings on it. So here we go. Let's just test her out a little bit here. Okay, so the volume sounds good. The volume knob, no scratchiness there. No scratchiness there. Let's see what this knob does. Okay, I feel that little notch right in the center right there. So, I'm thinking what this is doing. Let's just tap for a bit. Okay, goes to the notch. Now they're both on, all the way in the back position. Is your front pickup. So this is kind of the selector switch right here. And then we've got, uh, let's see what goes on here. So you've got a treble switch, wow. And probably a bass, treble and bass, built-in EQ. Super cool. Truss rod adjustment right here in the heel. Hmm. Just look down the neck and, ah, uh, yeah. I, I might snug that down just a little bit. First things first though, I'm gonna pull these old strings off of here. All right, so we're just getting some strings off of here. The Ernie Ball Bongo Bass. Four string. They also make these in a five string. So we're getting these strings off of here. And uh, Ernie Ball Music Man. You guys all know Leo Fender started Music Man. Now this string kind of looks like it's wired on here. Backwards. Wouldn't you think it should come around this way? So I'll restring it that way. To me, this looks backwards right here. But uh, Ernie Ball makes such great products. I love Ernie Ball strings. They're my biggest selling strings down here at the store. You know, every time I go to the NAMM show, it seems like that's always where I'm sort of hanging out. So if you guys are ever get into the NAMM show, and uh, you'll probably see me hanging out at the Ernie Ball booth. Every restring, I try to do a little shining a few things up, especially if it's an item that I just bought that's going to be for sale. I really shine that stuff up. A customer's guitar that's just a restring, you know, I just kind of clean it up a little bit, right? You don't want to get too crazy. Maybe like the old uh, story about. Um, Tom Petty, he wouldn't let anybody clean the fretboard on his old guitars. You could clean the frets, just don't take all that gunk off the fretboard. Yeah, but don't, don't, don't clean the fretboard. Some guys are like that. Because they love to make it look like they've been playing that thing forever. And you're cleaning up all the mojo off of that guitar. But uh, this fret, this fretboard looks really nice. A little tiny bit of fret wear right on that second fret, but hardly anything. This thing is in beautiful condition. The owner uh, brought this in, and he asked uh, me to put new strings on it. And he said it's been laying in his closet for like 10 years, just laying in his closet. In its case, he's got a really nice case for it. But that's where it's been kind of hiding out. 
And that's what some of these guys that uh, buy, sell, and trade guitars, that's kind of what they're hoping for. Is that they come across those kind of guitars. You get up close to this nut right here. Very unique, compensated nut. Very nice. The inlay markers look like little half circles. Very nice. So here's what I'm going to do right now. You guys love my camera work. I know you guys do. I'm going to just snug this truss rod a little bit. And even like all the old um, Music Man EVH stuff, the truss rod adjustment is right here in the heel. So I'm just going to take a regular little Allen wrench. I'm going to stick it in there like that. And I'm just going to tighten that. Oh, let's just go about that much. Okay, this is just a basic restring. This isn't a whole com complete setup. So just when he gets this back, it's just going to play, you know, just a little bit better. And he's going to love it. So, today's string choice, of course, Ernie Ball Super Slinky Bass Strings 45 through 100s. My favorite set of strings. If, if my, because uh, I'm a bass player, I play some gigs every once in a while. If I'm doing something and my low E string is a 105, it feels heavy to me. And I play with a guitar pick. So a 105 just kind of feels kind of heavy. And it makes me feel kind of slow on the bass. So I prefer a lighter gauge than some guys. I know some guys that uh, put the big giant 105s on there. No, that's not quite my style. I like the uh, I like the lighter strings. I know that Ernie Ball has a set of light gauge bass strings, extra lights, where the um, it's a, like a 90 through 40. So here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is pull the string tight and then give yourself, um, because the tip of the string goes down in here in the end. So you don't want this much string though. So you have to run it across here and give yourself probably about three inches. And hopefully that's enough. Wind it around here once like this. And then let's see if my Ernie Ball, man, I, it's like I'm working for Ernie Ball or something today. I get my Ernie Ball string winder. There's one wrap. There's two wraps. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Three strings on bass, you know. Guys don't change their bass strings very often. But man, it sure is. I highly recommend it. If you're playing a big gig somewhere and, and a very important gig, or if you're going in the studio, change those strings on your bass. It's going to make a big difference. Some guys love the sound of dead strings. Although, um, I remember uh, watching an interview with uh, the um, guy from uh, Duran Duran, uh, Roger Taylor? John, John Taylor? What's the guy's name? He likes dead strings on his face. He says he goes through like a whole tour, half the tour. With dead strings on his bass, so, you know, who am I to argue with the guy from Duran Duran? Um, so, but I kind of think it's a great idea to every once in a while, you bass players, spend that 25 bucks, throw a new set on there. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit longer here on the... 
D string. Sometimes you can go ahead and um, do the first wrap around there. There you go. Before you put your string winder on there. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that nut is very impressive. Compensated. For perfect intonation. Okay, so here's the G string. And one of my favorite things to do when there's women in the store, right guys, is to say, hey, uh, here's your G string. Oh wait, you're missing your G string. Oh, you need to you need to buy a new G. You need to buy a new G-string. Whenever I can mention the G-string, I do it. Being the old perverted guy that I am, right? Okay, so I'm going to say that this one should wrap this direction. Let me see what happens here. Yeah. There you go. So I think he had that wrapped around there wrong. When it comes to my string winder, the lower button right here tightens everything. And the upper one right here always loosens everything. And that's exactly what just happened here. So I'm going with it. So I did print up a little spec sheet here to share with you guys. And this base originally came with 45 through 100 super slinky bass strings, so that's what we just put back on it. Do they make a left-handed model when this came out? No, they do not. These are dual humbucking pickups with uh, neodymium magnets. So that's lightweight, right? You know the speakers. Uh, four band active preamp, volume, bridge, neck, pickup balance, treble, mid-high, and low mid bass so that's what all these controls are doing down here uh, the electronic shielding graphite resin coated cavity underneath the back plate there um, truss rod adjustable no component or string removal so again we showed you the truss rod how easy that is custom made lightweight tapered string posts an ergonomic design machine heads down here, the tuners. They're calling their fret markers half moons, custom half moons on an ebony fretboard. Mate, you know what? He said this this guitar was in his uh, closet for 10 years, so this might be older than that because this fretboard to me definitely looks like some sort of rosewood. So maybe the newer ones where I got this spec sheet uh, has ebony. To me that looks like um, a rosewood though. Select maple neck. Um, neck width an inch and five eighths at the nut and two and nine sixteenths at the last fret. Uh, the frets are 24 high profile wide. Scale length is 34 inches. Standard Music Man chrome-plated hardware and bridge. High-gloss polyester finish. Basswood body. The model is the Bongo 4 Bass. Cool guitar. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tune this thing up real quick. And I'm going to play it so you guys can hear what it sounds like a little bit. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll just put all these EQs right in the center there's a little notch you can feel where the center is and so here's the here's the back pickup right here Uh, 
all the way up to the front pickup, the neck pickup. job getting to restring guitars and when stuff like this comes in just being able to check it out for a little while I don't hear any buzzing anywhere along the neck um, so uh, tones there it is guys I've never seen one before the Ernie Ball music man bongo bass everybody have a great day and thank you guys for watching go buy a new guitar